everybody I wanted to do a part two kind of video to the one I've recently uploaded around fake ambassador scam sites and my personal experience with them um I wanted to show the other side um of what working with a brand really means to me in my experience um, the types of things you can expect, what you can do, all that good stuff. Um, and considering most of you may, well, you may not, you may be completely new to me, so hi. Um, but yeah, I work with a brand called Skull and Chains, um, and I will tell you all about how that came about and what we do. Um, but I kind of just wanted to say, you know, that although there are these scams and everything out there, there are some genuine brands who really like to work with influencers. I hate, hate, hate that word with a passion. Um, I, I just hate it. I hate even being called it. I don't even consider myself an influencer at all. Um, that's a whole different story. That's another video for another time. Um, but in general, I just wanted to talk around the other side to the scam artists, the genuine people out there, the genuine brands, um, and those that want to work with a brand or become an influencer or, you know, work with a company. What I find my experiences being very late to the game, being older, um, and really what I've been through. So... I work as a brand associate. Now, it's similar to a brand ambassador. In fact, it pretty much is a brand ambassador. It's just the terminology that we came up with when we were talking about it. Um, for Scarlet in Chains, you will notice on a lot of my videos, I'm always wearing Scarlet in Chains. I adore their jewellery. I have a extremely large collection I probably own more than Drew and Sophie have in stock um, a lot of it is customised a lot of it we've done designed together that I've purchased some of it yes has been gifted um, but a lot of it I have purchased putting it out there so I met Sophie and Drew at London Edge I was lucky enough to go in September 2019 and I managed to interview them. It was one of the first live interviews I did on my Facebook channel. And if you'd like to go and watch that, I will put a link in the description bar. Um, it does come in two parts because we had camera issues. We had signal issues. I was doing everything on my phone um, and technology basically just let us down as it does. Um, so I met them in September 2019. It's now on recording this October 2020. So we've known each other just over a year. And it was one of those conversations that even before I got the camera out and wanted to film, we just clicked instantly. So London Edge was over two days. It was over the Sunday and the Monday. Um, on the Sunday, I was introduced to them. I met them, got on really, really well with them. Um, wicked sense of humour, lovely couple, genuinely just warmed to them instantly. Um, on the Monday, I spoke to them and said, look, and I, I'm now kind of happy with where I am, being London Edge the first time, not so nervous, have met people, can I interview you live? And it wasn't pre-recorded, it wasn't edited, it was literally out there, which was how I like to do my videos, until obviously coming into YouTube, which is in a previous video. Um, so from that point um they were absolutely amazing i really can't describe them in any other way they have been gracious courteous friendly to the point where you know we, we're practically family we've been that close um we are we are pretty much family um i contact sophie most days of the week we have a good old natter we have general phone calls on life and catch-ups not always about business um and yeah they've they've become part of the family the extended family the family we choose um so how did it all come about so after i met them at london edge they were kind enough to put some of their items out um as influencer items so we basically got a free gift i got a bracelet i don't have it on me at the moment but it was very similar to this 
um, but the chain went across it had a ring and it had a heart a dark heart in the middle um, fell in love with it and literally was like can I buy that one that's there please as well I really want that one I've had my eye on it can I buy it and we were very sneakily whilst being chucked out of the venue by security very sneakily trying to put through a card transaction um, <laughs> so as I could take this necklace away so from that point we just had this energy between us um, and it was it was great it, it's not something I've really experienced in getting to know somebody that quickly um, getting to know somebody that honestly if that's a way of getting to know somebody it there just didn't seem to be any bravado there was no we're a company in your YouTube they were very understanding that I wasn't even on YouTube at the time um, so there was this whole just friendliness about everything so after London Edge, I did a live review on the jewellery. I just couldn't wait. I actually did it from my hotel room. Um, and they were really appreciative. They loved it. And since then, our relationship has just grown. So they contacted me, oh, a week or so later. We, we were just chatting. We were friends on Facebook. We were talking. We were phone calling. Um, and I think it must have been about a month later, I basically got this message saying we would love to work with you in a more formal way um, and we would love you to be a representative of our brand which I jumped at I mean I've never met a brand like this that just compliments who I am my aesthetic and everything else so completely so we had a conversation about what we were going to call it what it would mean and it was basically you represent us you you show our items you um we'll get pr boxes you know we we'll, we will work with you if you want something designed we can do that you take you you promote us and we'll work with you so what it doesn't mean let's do that side of it what doesn't it mean it doesn't mean me getting a piece of jewelry and going oh look at this on instagram once and then forgetting about it, it means working it means constantly promoting it means tagging it's hashtags it, and it's a lot of work it's a lot of work hashtags all the different bits and pieces promoting the, sorry it keeps disappearing you want to see the jewelry this this is a an essence jewel lunar essence in ghost i believe love this one but you want to be um working for the brand not just taking the odd picture slapping it up on social media going there you go i've worked for you you need to work at promoting so many things have have come from this i mean i pretty much wear scarlet and chains every single day so therefore they are constantly tagged in my pictures they are constantly tagged oh, excuse me on my social media they are constantly tagged in instagram facebook you name it it's there so where am i going with this i'm getting that i told you a waffle a waffle you just have to like deal with the points and hope eventually we come round to the right one um where's it led to it has led to some amazing weekends um some fun days out where i've actually gone up to visit them it's um ended up with me modeling for them on two occasions so i did my own collaboration with them i've done a couple of product shots for them and i have done um the recent kind of mini advert photo shoot for the new satanic panic it also means knowing what they're up to on a regular basis and keeping contact with them so i knew about the satanic panic range a long time ago <laughs> i knew what was going on i knew what the problems they've had the problems they haven't had the successes all that kind of thing all the way through and it's been quite a roller coaster a very successful roller coaster um, but it's been a roller coaster and you know when when they're stressed and they need someone to talk to and they want to vent I've been on the other end of the phone and because we've had that close working relationship you know when I've had a bad day I can pick up the phone and go I need to talk to someone you know it's that kind of thing but it means working alongside them it means working with them for pretty much nothing you know I get the enjoyment out of um having yes obviously a discount code that i can share with you guys i have a discount code for me personally for what i purchase believe me i still spent a small fortune 
small quite a large, quite a large fortune with them um i had literally two jewelry boxes about this big full literally full um but it means to me representing something that i truly believe in and not necessarily asking for anything in return now there's a lot of people out there um, of all ages who haven't been an influ influ influencer can't even say it um want to get into being an influencer and working with brands and this that and the other and they kind of have an expectation up here of what it should be when actually keeping it real is a better option now i've done modeling for two different brands one was prior to all this malarkey going on um, for a fascinator and hat brand I've done some work for them um, again items I purchased and they're just like we take your photo you look fabulous you know it works it works but what a lot of people seem to think is if I become a, an influencer I'm going to get all this free stuff and everyone's going to love me and I'm going to get all these discount codes and free stuff and free st no you will get free stuff but that's not all it's about. Not in, not in my experience anyway. Um, you will get discounts. You will get hefty discount codes when you buy per stuff personally. Um, but it's about working with a brand. It's about knowing who they are, what they stand for, knowing everything about them, being there for the ups and downs. And like like with the new, new Satanic Panic collection, you know, things were going wrong. I was there. I was not offering advice or telling them what to do, but sometimes just a sounding board. Um, I was getting to see designs before they were released. I was getting to see the postcard mock-ups before they were released. It, it was just fabulous. And it was a lovely little journey to be on. Um, so <laughs> working with a brand is not all about you get free stuff, you put up a picture and forgetting about it and that's it. If a brand, especially a small brand, someone like Scarlet and Chains who are UK based, they make an amazing product they have amazing aftercare they have an amazing way about them in the fact that they know that they have marketed their jewelry mainly for the bdsm community and in that sense they have a lot of people of different personalities you'll have your dominance you'll have your quiet ones your introverts and they treat everybody the same they treat everybody with the same kindness and acceptance of who they are as everybody should really um so when you're working with a small brand like that they don't have a million depots with hundreds of staff that they can afford to pay and all this stuff and all these orders they are not guaranteed an order um they know that today they could receive 10, 10 orders through Etsy or through their website and that would be a really great day and keep them really busy. Tomorrow they may not get any. The next day they may not get any. The next day they may only get one or two. It just depends. And certainly in an uncertain climate like we are in Auntie Felicity world, COVID for those who missed the last video, you know, in, in Auntie Felicity world where everything's a little bit uncertain, they they don't know. They've got you know upkeep of of where they live this is their full-time job they have given up everything to do this they have given up stable full-time jobs to follow their passion which is amazing and i can pretty much say that most of the small companies i'm aware of are people who have given up full-time work to follow their dream now if you've given up your full-time work your steady stable reliable wage that's coming in every month to then go and pursue a career in selling something that you don't know if people are going to like, you don't know if people are going to come back, you don't know if they're going to order one item or a hundred, you don't know if you're going to be able to get wholesalers in interested, you don't know how it's going to take off. It's such an uncertain world. The last thing they can really afford to do is go, hey, 20 influencers have free stuff. They genuinely can't. So they tend not to have multiple influencers they may have a handful but like not hundreds they probably have a few items that they give away maybe once or twice a year but in general they are predominantly trying to keep their business going and make sure it doesn't fail 
So for me, working alongside them, everything I do and the exposure that I give them, in my head, I'm working. In my heart, I'm helping. And that's how I, I view it. I don't look and go, oh, well, I've had to buy all this stuff to get this free. That's not how it works. Not for me anyway. I, I love their stuff. I'll buy it till the cows come home. Even if they didn't want to work with me ever again, I would still buy their jewellery because it's amazing. Um, but it is working for it. It is knowing the brand. It's knowing what they stand for. It's following their values. It's more than just a click and a picture and a hashtag. It's repeating that. It's being in the forefront with it. It's reminding people. It's using your discount code for good rather than kickbacks. Yes, I have a discount code for Morrigan Raven. Uh, Morrigan Raven. Ugh. Let's try that one again, shall we? I have a discount code for Scarlet and Chains. I have a discount code for XO Umbra. I have a discount code for Witch Brew Crafts. I've, I will put them in the, in the drop down. Um, but I don't expect anything from it. I certainly don't get anything from it. There's no kickback for me. I don't say, oh, well, for every 10 sales you, you make, one of, one of the cost of one of them comes. It's nothing like that. The discount codes I have are purely for all you wonderful guys out there to use and you know keep these little businesses going because a 10 percent discount code on something might not seem a lot but to somebody who's trying to run a small business it can be a hell of a chunk of money so if you look at an item that's 30 pounds and they've budgeted that 30 pounds to cover materials time um postage all the different bits like that whether they include postage or not most people don't so let's take that one out time materials designing ordering invoicing all the stuff that they've got to do aside from just to make the jewelry or make the item they're selling you know there's advertising there's pictures there's products there's product information all encompassing into one price and then they're allowing somebody to go you can buy that but at 10 percent cheaper every time you use my code every time you go to this company I find that really trustworthy. I find that an honour that they would be happy for me to go out to. I mean, how many have I got on my Facebook? 620 something people follow me on Facebook. Now, imagine if those 620 people all decided for Christmas this year to buy something from Scarlet in Chains. And take that 10 percent discount. That's 620 items that they could have sold at full, full price. And if you do 620 by maybe two or three pounds, even by two pounds per item for some of their cheaper stuff, that's still 1,240 pounds. If you then make it three pounds off on every item, that's 1,860 pounds. If you take four pounds off an item, that's well over 2,000 pounds that they are not getting because they trust somebody to say, hey, all you guys, here's 10% off. That's a lot of money when you are a small business. And when I mean small, I mean one or two people in a small area that they may have rented or in their lounge or in an office room in, in their house, dedicating their lives to creating a fantastic product that they are proud of, that they are entrusting then to somebody they hardly know with a media platform who go hey i'll get you i'll get you followers i'll get you this and it's a lot of trust i mean i i know from having conversations with them they hadn't really worked with influencers before they'd not really come across it um when i spoke to them at, at london edge off camera it was very much you know we didn't know what to expect we didn't know really what the influencers were like do we approach them do they approach us do we talk to them do they talk you know how does this work because predominantly london edge is a trade show so they were there to get business they were there to get wholesalers they were there to attract other companies who would stock their items in bulk um so it was very much a, a new experience for them and of course when i came along who knew nothing about anything as usual um you know it was all very new to me so if you want to go down the ambassador brand associate 
influencer, whatever the hell you want to call it. You need to really think about, are you prepared to put the work in? Are you prepared to build your following? Are you prepared to constantly hashtag everything you, that you're in? I mean, I may be showcasing a different necklace. It doesn't mean to say I don't hashtag that I'm still wearing scarlet and chains. Um, there are several other people out there that I buy jewellery from, which is through Crafts, Simply Gothic, Curiology, um, even Killstar I've bought the, bought the odd thing from. But if I'm still wearing scarlet and chains, I will still tag them in the video because that still gets them views. I will tag them in the photo. It will still get them views. It will get them recognised. It will get them followers. And it could just be that someone goes, oh, I like your bracelet. And I go, scarlet and chains, here you go. It's about putting in the work. It's not just sitting back and expecting companies to come up to and go, I love your media channel. Have some free shit. It's not. <laughs> Nothing in this life is free. OK, so if you look at the fact that I get take take the latest Scarlet and Chains um, Satanic Panic. So there were 13 items released in this range. Six of them are permanent. Seven of them are limited edition. I have out of those seven, all seven limited edition. Out of those, I paid for three of them and was gifted four. That's four items gifted at around £30, what are they, £29, make it easy, £30 an item, plus postage that they have missed out on, trusting me that I will do a review, that it'll get viewed, that people will go to the site, that people will buy from the site because I've said it's great or whatever I've said about it, that they will get repeat custom that their customer service will be enough to have people coming back, that their stock list will be enough to have people go, do you know what, I like that, but I'm going to get that at the same time, that they will have enough of a range to be able to, you know, in entice other people from other areas. So they've got their gothic and pagan and occult range and they've got their BDSM pretty crystal range and they've got, you know, all the different, they've got their acrylic range that I think they're fading out now. Um, but they have all these different bits that they're entrusting me to get them likes. And that's a big responsibility. Um, you know, I've not, I've had very little, if anything, free from anyone else. Um, I've had discounted pieces. I've had the odd birthday gift. Um, I had two companies recently, which is Brew Crafts and Alternative Finch who both just sent me additional bits for my birthday, which was absolutely wonderful. And I will do a review of that probably on Facebook at some point. Um, but in general, working with a company means working with a company. It's not, oh, look at me in this outfit and pretty. And oh, by the way, I'm wearing this. It's repeating what you're doing at a quality that gives them exposure. It's about working with them and knowing what they're about. It may lead to a club. It may not. You know, if you're expecting that every single brand that comes near you that wants to work with you or wants you to represent them, um, that suddenly you're going to get this design opportunity or everything, whether it's sportswear, jewellery, hats, shoes, whatever, it's not always going to happen. You have to think about the brand, what they're doing, what they can afford to do. Um, I have been exceptionally lucky that I've only been doing this a short time and that I've been able to do a collab um, there's also talk of a long-term permanent piece coming out within the satanic panic range um, that's based on me they've even named one of their chandelier necklaces after my um, pseudonym on YouTube and, and Facebook um, because I requested a certain piece they custom made it for me. They then did a take of that piece and said, you know, can we do use this? I went go for it. And it's been called what I wanted to call it. Um, there have been a times when we've designed something and I've come up with a name for it. There's been times when we've put something together, I've come up with a name for it and then they've gone, can we release this? And I'm like, go for it. And, you know, it's your item. Only if there's certain things that I will go, please don't, because I've had them specifically custom made for me or like my Valentine's necklace was designed by 
the glamorous griffin so i don't really want that kind of thing being being duplicated but in general i really don't mind it's their business if if someone sees something that i've gone and gone oh my god that's beautiful i'd love one of those carry on that is you know it's it's up to them whether they say yes or no but they know the pieces i don't want copied they know the pieces i really don't want anyone else to have um a lot of my stuff is a standard design but in a slightly different color to what's normal for example um in the satanic panic range the sabre jewel piece actually the top piece is a um stainless steel moon i've actually changed it because i know sabra um personally she is an absolute demon but the most precious diva you will ever come across so i asked for my top one to be changed for a demon princess um crystal they will do that they probably won't do it for everybody because you know they need to make money they've got a standard process for these limited edition pieces but again, it's a perk and that's the way I look at it. It's more of a perk of working with these companies than an expectation. I don't expect a collab. I don't expect items to be named after me. I don't expect them to send me free things. When they do, it's amazing. But I also know how much I've spent in the background. Um, and for my giveaway that I'm doing, yes, they gave me a set for the for the, the video and and you know because I'd, I'd worked with them on it but i also bought a set and which i have paid for out of my money so as you guys can have free items and, and i can do a giveaway so there's that give and take throughout but if you're going to sit there and you expect all these big brands or whatever to come up to you and go hey want to work with us the likelihood is it's not going to happen um unless you have a big following and I'm talking thousands of followers, whether you and how present you are, you know, if you're somebody who makes video once a month, then people aren't going to gravitate towards you. If you're somebody who uploads three or four times a week and you're not saying it has to be that much, but if you're three or four times a week and you're diverse and you have a wide range and you have quite a good following, that's what people will gravitate to. But you have to be prepared to be prepared to work for it. It's not a case of just sitting there going, well, if they want me, they'll come. It's not a case of if you build it, they will come. Not in this case. It also depends who you want to work with. I mean, do you want to work with a jewellery company, a shoe company? Do you want to work with um, a clothing company, a T-shirt company, a printing company? You know, there's all these different types of companies out there. What do you want? Who do you want to represent? I'm pretty much up for most things let's be fair as long as they fit into the gothic alternative sub subculture and they cater for plus size then i'm up for it i will happily work with anybody and anyone who wants to me to help in whatever capacity that may be um that's not saying i will work with them all of them um i predominantly you know scarlet and chains will always be my number one um as long as they want me, I, they will be my number one. Um, but I also have to think about my capacity, my full time job. I do, you know, I run a charity. I do this as a hobby. I've got all these other things going on in my life. God knows what I'd do if I had kids as well. I'd never have any spare time. I'd never sleep. God damn it. Um, but, you know, who, who do you want to work with? What do you represent? What is what do you want? You know, if it's a small art company then make your posts about art get noticed hashtags are your friend in that respect but the more you push and the more you i find go out to these places going i want to do this you've got to prove yourself you've got to prove that you want to do it you can't just rock up and go i'm going to come and represent your brand and i'm going to do you one picture a month and it's not like that you do what the brand needs if they need i mean to be fair to be fair, with, with Drew and Sophie, it's pretty damn easy. They know I will tag them almost every single day in Instagram, in a photo, because I wear an awful lot of Scarlet and Chains jewellery to work, outside of work, going out the lot. They know that if they've got something exciting coming up, I'm in there, I'm helping. I'm, I'm not helping and taking over, not to be, you know, pushy or anything like that, but if they need to chat or they want to... Can you check this design? Can you proofread this? I've been there. Um, 
if someone else comes along and they want a similar thing, I'll need to look at time. What what time can I apply to this? Is it for me? Um, and don't be scared to say no. A lot of people will, oh, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, just to see which one works out the best for them. I'm not like that. I'm honest. If I can't work with somebody because I'm busy or they didn't realise I had a full time job and this isn't my YouTube is not my career. Facebook is not my career. Um, if I'm getting to the point where I'm over capacity, I'm going to stand up and say so. I'm, I'm not scared of that. But if I can explain, well, actually, I have one big association and I can do this for you. Would that work? There's always a compromise. Look at YouTubers like, and I'm going to pick on her again. Sorry, sweetheart. You know I love you. Pick Emily Boo. So Emily has um, a couple of bits going on. She will admit she's worked with Shein and she's dropped that. Um, she gets quite a few people messaging her saying, we'd love to collab with you. We'd love you to work with you. We want to send you from three stuff for you to review. She has well over 100,000 followers. Um, but she's honest. You know, she is one of the most honest YouTubers I've ever come across. There's a lot of people out there who are scared to say something shit because they might upset somebody. She does not care. She will self message them and go, I will not do this unless you want a 100% honest review. If I don't think your stuff is good, I will say so. If you still want to send me free stuff, that's up to you. Nine times out of ten, in it piles and you know what she doesn't keep any of it most of the free stuff she gets if she gets something gifted to her to promote or to talk about or to review and she gets a second item she'll keep one she'll give the other one away that's just amazing that's sharing the love you know and that person who gets that item might go do you know what i really like this i'm gonna go and buy something else it's how you make it work for you and if you look at the really successful influencers out there they're not after kickbacks they don't really get much out of it they might get the odd free stuff but they're not people who hoard all the free stuff and keep the free stuff for themselves they share the love um i have probably been if i looked at my scarlet and chains collection i've probably been gifted less than five percent of it genuinely if i put in a bulk i tend to do bulk orders um and i will go and spend anywhere from 150 to 400 pounds with them in one hit that's including any discounts that i get so i'm talking about a lot of jewelry if you're think if you think their average price is about 32 pounds you're looking at 10 10 12 items at a time um and some of them it's been more than that but out of that i may get gifted one item one necklace or a, an additional pair of earrings you know but i never expect it i already have a discount code with them i don't expect them to then gift me on top of that but when they do it's amazing um and it could just be something they're trialing they've sent they've sent me pieces where the clips on these necklaces um so they use these are most amazing absolutely amazing um chunky clips which with somebody who has hand issues these are absolutely brilliant they sent me a piece of jewelry that had had a manufacturer change on the clips they'd found somebody else who did a similar item in the uk and they were like can we try these because we want to keep our, our brand in the uk and i'm like yeah fine so i wore a piece of jewelry for a week and tested it out and trialed it and see if it broke or came off and i'm like no it's great and they trust me enough to give them that information and to give them that feedback so it's very much a two-way street it's not all every time i i buy on a massive amount of, of stuff from them i get something free yes that's how it's worked out but in general it's not expected um i don't go up to them and go you must give me this i you know when i got the full collection of the of the four charms gifted to me i'm like are you sure <laughs> i'm still gonna buy another set to give away but are you sure you're gonna give and they were like yeah it's fine you know because we want you to go and do the, this full review um but just working alongside them with you know designs um sophie will often send me a picture of something and go does this work we're not sure you know we've we, one of us kind of thinks it does and the other one thinks it's it's not great 
and I'll look at it and I'll go actually maybe swap this out and that would work better and they'll go away and go do you know what we've had a play and actually this what do you think and you'll see these new bits develop or I'll have said to them oh can, can I have this as a custom piece is this possible and they'll go away and two or three weeks later they'll go look we've done this we're going to put it in the main line it's similar to yours but it's not the same and if I can help them with ideas because I have lots of creativity when it comes to jewellery um, and I like my pieces to stand out and be different but if I can help them with that and then help them put more lines in then, then I can wear my pieces and go this is available on the website it's it's amazing because not only am I representing their brand on a regular basis but I'm showing people subconsciously by constantly wearing their jewellery without actually having to do a lot um, but it is about working with people knowing the brand getting a working relationship having very little expectation um, I didn't go to London Edge expecting to come away with a brand associate job <laughs> I went to London Edge to see what it was all about to see what was coming out to get some inspiration some excitement I've met some wonderful people through doing it um, but I didn't go in with this expectation of oh I'm going to stand here and say I'm an influencer and I'm going to come away with this brand and this brand I spoke to many brands that day, I, over the course of the, the two days actually, I spoke to many brands, I interviewed brands, I had a very close relationship in chatting to one particular brand, but I've not heard from them since, you know, it's it swings and roundabouts. But if you're somebody who's going to sit there and go, well, I want to be an influencer, have a look at the people that do it, have a look at the people who do it well, have a look at the people who are honest about their reviews there are a lot of influencers out there who will <sighs> everything's always great and if you watch um i can't remember the name of the company but it was about this long emily boo did a review of interdemodius i think was the company and she even said in that there's an awful lot of people the reason I've gone with this company, this brand is because there's an awful lot of people who think they're amazing here's my opinion um, and there's a lot of things that I've done where I mean if you watch any of my Killstar hauls you'll know that there's people who will shout the hilt about Killstar and how amazing it is and everything's great and if they had one little nitpick no, if it's shoddily made I'm going to call you out on it if it's not put together properly and the seams haven't been sewn properly, I'm going to call you out on it. If your sizing is absolutely crap, I'm going to call you out on it. Because my integrity and my personality and who I am as a person, I wouldn't feel right in sitting here going, oh, I bought this from such and such a brand and it's amazing and I've worn it every day and blah, blah, and lie through my teeth. I need to know that if I'm telling you something's great, I know it's great. I've used it. I've worn it. I've washed it. I've played with it. I've, you know, strung it up in the ceiling and I've done all these different things with it. And it's good. And it's good quality. And that I believe in the brand. And that's why, for me, the, the, the work I do with Scarlet and Chains is, is just amazing because they have the most amazing aftercare. They have the most amazing policy of resize for life. You know, I don't know another single company out there who will let you buy a piece of jewellery, customise it, and then go, actually, two years later, I've become pregnant and my neck's got a bit thick and I need to change the length of it and go, OK, bring it back in, we'll sort that out for you. Nobody else does that, certainly not without a hefty charge involved. Um, but Scarlet and Chains do. They treat everybody like family. They treat everybody like they are the most important client to them. And in some respects, they are. They don't know if that person's ever going to come back. They don't know if that person can only afford to buy one item or is going to be buying one item a month. So they have to give the best customer service every single time. And out of all the people I've known, whether they are large companies like Killstar or whether they're small companies like Scarlet and Chains or House of Bats, they are one of the companies who really understand their customers they 
love talking to them. They want to make every single purchase feel like an experience and not just a transaction. And that's what I love about them. You don't just go to their Etsy and purchase a piece. You will get a message from Sophie or Drew saying, hi, you've purchased this. Can we just check your measurements? You know, every piece is custom made. Can we just doubly check this is the one you want? You know, in the picture, it's this, but in daylight, it might be this colour crystal. They've got one, that beautiful heliotrope that can go blue or purple. If they've only got two left, they will probably send you a picture of the crystal and go, these are the two ones we've got left in stock. One slightly darker than the other. Which do you prefer? And it's that service, that care, that attention to detail that makes them the standout brand that they are. So why wouldn't I, as an, as an associate for them, want to do the best job I can as well? I haven't had a multitude of companies come up and go, work for us, work for us. I'm not that bothered. Um, I have a really good relationship with the one I work with. I had a really good relationship with the previous one I worked with. Um, circumstances changed that. Um, and if another company comes up that goes, hey, we'd like to work with you, we've seen your videos, we like it, then I will take it with the same respect that at the end of the day, whether you call yourself an influencer, an ambassador or anything else, if somebody chooses to speak to you on your social media, something about you must work for them. They must like your look, your aesthetic, the way you are with people, your honesty, whatever it is that they like about you, find out what it is find out what's drawn them to you get to know them get to know what they do get to know what makes their brand tick get to know what their brand means to them then you can go out and you can represent that brand with honesty with integrity and allow them to trust you that you can represent them in the correct manner um Obviously, if somebody sends you something and they want to go, can you review this for us? We'd like that. And it is shit. Be honest about it. I don't see the point in lying to gain more free stuff um, or to gain popularity. It. I would rather watch 20 no, lower grade. And that sounds awful in the way I'm saying it, but you'll get you'll get what I mean lower grade YouTubers who have less than 10,000 followers who are going to be honest about what they're saying and even less than 10,000. Heck, I'd watch somebody with less than a 1,000 followers as long as I knew they were being honest about the product over somebody who maybe has 360,000 followers if I know that every time they review something the company's great, the customer service is great, the returns are great and blah 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 and this is great and that's great because not everything is great in life. We wish it was, but it's not. Not everything is going to be perfect. Not everything every time is going to be amazing. Take Killstar. I've had some amazing customer service from them. I've had some shocking customer service from them. I've had some amazing pieces. I've had some pieces that we won't talk about Bin Bag Gate on YouTube. But those of you that have seen it will know. You know, I've had some pieces that are shoddy. I've had pieces that have fallen apart. I've had pieces that I don't understand their logic of customer service. And I'm going to be honest about that. You know, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, they've been amazing every time I've contacted them because they haven't. Um, and at some point, you know, the, 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 Sophie and Drew will tell you, I will look at their stuff and go, you know what? Yeah, I'm not struck on that one. They have a new crystal out. Um, I think they've called it Nymph, Nymph Queen. And it's like an autumnal golden green. But I don't like the colour. And when Sophie spoke to me and went, oh, I expect you'll want something in our, in our new colour. I'll send you a picture. It's gorgeous. And I'm like, actually, no, I'm not struck on it. They don't take offence on that. That's my choice. That's my taste. They're not going to suddenly hate me because I don't like it. Because they know that with everything else, I am 100% honest. And they would rather have my honest opinion than have me lie and go, oh, yeah, I'll have that and then never wear it. Um, whether I've purchased it or been gifted. Um, so rather than me waffling on, which, you know, can happen, rather than me waffling on, all I would say to anyone out there, being as I am a brand associate is an amazing experience. I've had 
some amazing opportunities through it. You know, I've modelled, I've collabed, I've designed, I've known about things ahead of time. You get the sneaky little secrets and previews, which is fabulous. Um, and it's like a little secret squirrel society in certain respects. Um, but in general, if that's the thing you want to get into, I would say know your brands, know your brands, know who you want to work with, know the types of brands that you want to work with. Do you want to work with independent small UK? Do you want to work with somebody bigger? Do you want to do shoes, jewellery, glasses design, um, clothing? Do you want to do accessories, fascinators? You know, what do you want to work with? And then target your social media to those types of brands. There's no point wanting to be a shoe designer and then never posting about shoes because brands won't know. Um, be honest. And if you don't like something, say so. They're not going to hate you for it. Well, some might. But in general, people will respect you and people will work with you for your honesty. Now, I have one major association i had one previously that due to their circumstances and change we're not working together anymore it's nothing to do with me it literally was they shut the small personal circumstances they shut the small outlet they had and everything is now online so my connection to them has disappeared for now it will come back i'm pretty sure I just need to be able to make that connection again with that person um, when their personal circumstances have improved. Um, but know who you're representing, know their ethics, know how they work. For example, if you want to work with someone like Shein, who are shoddy to hell, but you like their work ethics, you go for it. Don't know many people that do like their work ethic but you know that's what you want but if you want to work with a brand with integrity make sure that your social media has integrity make sure that you can be trusted by your followers make sure that what you're saying your followers will know that when you say this is a great product they will believe you and don't spread yourself too thin um i see a lot of people who will try anything and everything Hone in, hone in on what you want to do, hone in on what you believe in, hone in on, you know, if you wanted a new type of face cream, you wouldn't try go out and buy everything in the supermarket and everything in the ph pharmacy store and everything at the boutique. You would go out and you'd probably buy one, maybe two items and you'd sit and you'd ponder over them. So why as an influencer would you want to have everything that anyone's giving away when it doesn't prove that those items are any good. All it means is that you've been given a load of stuff from a load of companies who expect you to say good things. So, you know, work out who you want to represent. Work out the type of company you want to represent. Get to know them. Approach them. Say, you know, say you like what they do. You know about their brand. You've, you've read their portfolios. You know, you'd really love to be able to help them out. Is there an item that you could purchase that you could then review? And you'll be surprised what can happen. Um, when you are a huge YouTube star or however it goes, a lot of companies will come at you. Um, but when you're smaller, when you're kind of my level, I mean, even at YouTube, I'm not that great at the moment. But even on the smaller levels, you know, you have to do some of the work. So all I will say is, Focus on what you want to do. If you're targeting a certain area of accessories or clothing, make sure you're already posting about it. There's no point me suddenly going, I want to post about Lolita or Kuwait or however it's pronounced because it's not my style. So why would I be posting about it? It's not for me. So leave that to the ones who want to do it. Um gamers i'm not really into gaming so why would i post about game you know i post about things that i like that i love and the association that i have with scarlet and chains is just amazing because we know each other we've got to know each other we've worked together we've developed a relationship and i've kind of set a bar of you know my to myself really 
of I have promised when I did this I would be 100% honest. I would tell the truth. If I didn't like something, I'm more than happy to say so. I have just been exceptionally lucky that I've not received any from them that I don't like, mainly because I buy the stuff and help design it myself. Um, however, had I got something from the, the Satanic Panic range I didn't like, I probably would have said this is not my thing but the quality is good this is good it's still this you know it's I wasn't sure I'd like the Baphomet but I actually think he's really cute or Philip the goat as I refer to him um but had there been something in there that I didn't like there's ways of phrasing it without going this is horrible and I'm never going to wear it um but I actually saw it before I got to review so I was like yeah actually I really like this um I had the opportunity of having the full set the full 13 pieces and I actually gave back four of them because I had similar pieces or they weren't quite my thing um the inverted pentagrams not really me the big moons I've already got moon pieces from them so I you know I'm not greedy I'm not going to take the piss I'm not going to go I'm going to have it all because I can I actually went no actually I'm not going to take these they're not my thing I've got similar pieces so go and sell these to others and, and, and make your money um so it really is about being honest having that integrity about yourself and your channel um not expecting too much remember if you're going for the small uk brands they can't afford it they can't afford to send you something free every week or every month you may be lucky enough that they can but in most cases they can't afford to so if it's something you really really want to do be honest be 100% honest. If you don't like something, say so. If you love something, people will trust you more. Hone in on what you want to do, who you want to represent, the types of companies you want to represent. And be present. Be present in social media. Make sure that you're getting out there, that you're doing something. I try to post on Instagram daily. I don't always do it. Um, I do try. It doesn't always work. It's easier when I'm at work and I've got an outfit of the day I can do. Um I don't film every day, I don't do videos every day, I don't do lives every day, I don't even do lives every week, let's be honest, I've got a bit slack. Um, but being present in your social media, being present in what you want to be in is very much key in being seen. Um, make sure that your fan base is an honest fan base and not bought customers. So there are ways out there, apparently, I have no clue. Um, but Instagram, occasionally you'll get a message that goes, here, if you click this survey or if you do this, we'll give you 10,000 followers. It's all a scam. They're fake accounts. They're going to get deleted. If you're the sort of person that wants to do that and buy followers, you're never going to get a brand who will genuinely trust what you say if suddenly one day you've got 15,000 followers and the next day you've got 7,000 because you've bought X amount and they've all been deleted by Instagram because they're fake accounts. So honesty, being true to yourself, being true to what you want to represent is the best way forward and the best advice I can give. If you really want to work with a brand, be prepared to work with a brand. Don't be, expect everything to be given to you for nothing, for get them getting nothing back. There's reviews, there's pictures, there's being present with it, there's being, you know showing every day or every other day just keeping it in people's minds that will get you that following and that will get them the help that they need and that's what you're there to do you are there to if you like the term influence other people to buy this particular brand so if you're not showing it what are you influencing if you're not wearing pieces that you've been gifted or that you've bought what are you representing just something to think about so I'm going to stop waffling. Um, I will say to Scarlet and Chains, if you're watching this, thank you for having me. I feel very honoured that I've been involved in your pictures, that I've been involved in, you know, some of the, the amazing pieces that you've done, that you've allowed me to collab with you, that you have allowed me to represent your brand in such a way. Um, I love what you do. I wouldn't have so much of your jewellery if I didn't. Um, and I will work with you and represent your brand as long as you'll have me. Um, and to all of those of you who don't know who Scarlet and Chains are, I will pop a link below. I will pop my discount code. Again, I'm not getting a discount code that's giving me kickbacks. I'm getting a discount code that the only joy I get out of it is knowing that you save a bit of money. Um, 
so you know it's not something I'm not getting kickbacks I'm not getting a percentage of it nothing literally nothing and that's the way I prefer it I would rather they had the money um, which is why like I said at least 95% of my collection at least I have purchased hand on heart probably more like 97% of it I've purchased so I'm going to leave it there thank you ever so much for listening to me waffle in your ear yet again um, I'm hoping the sound quality is good I'm hoping the lighting's better this time I've got a little bit of a if you see my Instagram I've put up a little bit of a tripody linking thing that now has a microphone and all that stuff so I'm hoping the sound quality is better um i'm now going to go and make some tea because i'm sure the glamorous griffin is hungry it's it's nearly seven o'clock here now and i know this isn't going out the day that I, I make it but you know it's been a long day we need food and i'm going to say good night so be you do what you want to do represent how you want to represent but make sure you do it with honesty and as always just do you <laughs>